welcome to this week's edition of U News, where you get U News. We begin U News tonight with a live weather report from in the field with our weather girl, Jackie Dutan. Jackie? Yes, Tupac, as you can see here in Ethereum, we are experiencing heavy wind and massive flooding. Wind gusts are up to 120 miles per hour and it is raining red candles. Just take a look. Thanks, Jackie. Well, someone might want to call FEMA and the Red Cross because this week was a f***ing disaster. The problem began when FTX's CEO Sam Bankman-Fried, or SBF, on Twitter was rumored to be talking badly about Binance's CEO CZ earlier this week. Binance was an early investor in FTX and took part of their investment in $2 billion of FTX's native token FTT. Panic selling of FTT started when CZ issued one tweet that basically said, The more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. This tweet caused the price of FTT to drop 15 to 20 percent from retail panic sellers alone, causing questions of potential insolvency issues on FTX. The crypto world began breathing again after an abrupt announcement that Binance was going to buy out FTX and save them from insolvency, but less than 24 hours of due diligence research later, Binance backed out of the deal, meaning that more than $8 billion in investor money on FTX is gone. Is it just me or does this guy look like a younger version of Mrs. Doubtfire with a better dye job? This motherfucker managed to Kanye Kazi his money and an entire crypto industry in 24 hours with a tweet. Cryptocurrency was created as an answer for what the banks did with our money in 2008, but FTX, Celsius, Luna, and 3AC all have just cut copy-pasted the 2008 crisis and threw the mask of crypto over its head so people wouldn't recognize it. So I don't know who needs to drive the mystery mobile so we can start catching these idiots Scooby-Doo style, but I've seen you little DeFi degenerates dig up all kinds of information about people. Let's start making sure these exchanges have the funds they claim. For now, let's hope for a rebrand of FTX to the more appropriately named FKD. I've just heard great news. Our weather girl, Jackie, has been airlifted to our next location and is live in the field to report. Thanks, Tupac. As you can see, everything is on fire. Everything is burning. But some homeowners here in the Solana village are still refusing to leave. They're saying that the fire began from an explosion of a homemade bomb the arsons referred to as Alameda. Just terrible. Next up, if you're holding this next token, you might want to whisper. Crypto protocol Library lost their case against the SEC this week, and their token will be deemed a security. The judge ruled against Library largely on the fact that there was essentially no use for the tokens at the time of the sales. Well, there's also no use for a real library anymore because of Amazon and the internet, but they still exist. Why the hell are we letting the Dewey Decimal System people regulate internet money? Oh, I've just been told we have another live weather update. Let's take a look. Hi, Tupac. It is absolutely otherworldly out here at Mount Satoshi in Middle Charts. A volcanic eruption is threatening the lives of what looks to be millions of orcs who say they hold their crypto on centralized exchanges. This is getting really ugly. Everything is red. The buyers and sellers are causing a bloodbath. Back to you. Wow. Hopefully the fighting there reaches a middle earth. Speaking of legal firestorms, a hacker who was in possession of over 50,000 Bitcoin he'd illegally obtained via the Silk Road was arrested at his home in Georgia this week. Law enforcement found the 50,500 Bitcoin of the approximately 53,500 Bitcoin he'd stolen located in an underground floor safe and the rest on a single board computer that was submerged under blankets in a popcorn tin stored in a bathroom closet. Who gave him this hiding place idea? The Clintons? Nothing sketchy about computer equipment in a bathroom with water everywhere. Also, blankets in a bathroom? Ew. Most interesting to note, in 2017, while holding the stolen Bitcoin, the thief James Zong also received an equivalent number of Bitcoin cash tokens in a free airdrop. But let me get this straight. This guy steals an amount of Bitcoin worth over $3 billion last year and barely sold any of it. But paper hands and centralized exchange CEOs can't manage to even hold the Bitcoin that's legally theirs. 
Someone should tell the judge that this guy deserves a lesser sentence for being diamond hands of the century. He's a hero. We've just received news of a major cataclysmic event taking place on the island of FTT. Here's a live clip now. Our last story tonight might actually blow your mind. Earlier this week, it was reported that the Oculus co-founder unveiled a new VR headset that kills its wearer in real life if they die in a game. Using a rigged set of coordinated shots to the front of the head, the VR headset would deliver a final game over blow. Despite its intricacies in technology and real world usability, the co-creator of Oculus says that it's just a novelty and not meant for production and the current headset will sit in his office like decoration. I'm sure the US government DOD isn't interested in this at all. But you know what? This might be a Web3 way to solve some Web3 problems. The next centralized exchange CEO in crypto that starts to get too big for their britches should be threatened with this headset. I said what I said. That's all for this week's edition of You News, where you get totally unnecessary, useless crypto news. I'm Tupac of Coors, and I'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.